microchips implanted in our brains and artificial intelligence much smarter than humans. Appearing on this week's edition of The Global Lane, the author of the book Dark Eon exposes the globalist agenda for the future. Joe Allen explains scientism. The techno elites believe that science and technology, not God, are the means to human salvation. Scientism very basically is the belief that scientific inquiry and discovery will answer all of the existential questions in human life. All those questions which religion seeks to satisfy, scientism uh, holds up material discovery as the uh, the means of salvation, the means of transcendence. Transhumanism is an outgrowth of that. Transhumanism is the idea that technology will be the, the instrument of that salvation, the instrument of that transcendence. So this is not uncommon knowledge, I think, in our era. It's, in fact, very obvious, especially in the wake of the pandemic. Well, you mentioned that Gnostics believed in Sophia, a feminine figure that had godlike features, the female twin of Jesus, they believed. So is it by accident that one of the best-known robots of our time is named Sophia? Tell us more about that significance. So the robot Sophia addressed the UN yet again for their uh, sustainable development goals meeting. Uh, Sophia takes her name directly from the uh, Gnostic Aeon uh, Sophia. So um, the robot was created by Hanson Robotics. Uh, David Hanson, founder of Hanson Robotics, named Sophia after the character Sophia in Philip K. Dick's novel, Vallis. The novel Vallis has a Gnostic premise. The character Sophia is meant to uh, symbolize the Sophia of Gnosticism. And if you look at the statements from David Hansen, if you look at David Hansen's PhD dissertation, uh, and of course, other figures in and around Hansen Robotics, it's without a doubt, there's, there's no denying it. Uh, they are seeking to create a sort of technological inversion of what the ancient Gnostics put forward. Well, Elon Musk has talked about implanting an AI microchip into our brain. Do you really see that happening? What would that mean for humanity? Uh, would it make us smarter, destroy us both? So Elon Musk, who uh, September 18th uh, discussed this with Benjamin Netanyahu and also a num uh, two other prestigious AI thinkers, uh, he foresees a potential future in which he said hundreds of millions or billions of people would be implanted with these in order to guide AI according to human will. And um, this is not something that will happen. Neuralink, his company, Musk's company, just got FDA approval. But uh, there are two other companies, BlackRock Neurotech, funded by Peter Thiel, and Synchron, uh, which is funded by both Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. Both of these companies already have brain-computer interfaces implanted in human brains that allow them to interact with digital devices by way of artificial intelligence. This is already a reality. Well, what about the human soul here, Joe? Uh, while they may be smarter than most humans at this point, AI and robots lack a soul. And it sounds like uh, these creators are trying to play God or replace God. So what difference does all this make? In their conception, and this is a generalization, but it's one that holds true for the vast majority of the people, uh, transhumanists, futurists, accelerationists, long-termists, they you pretty much universally see the human brain as the soul. The patterns of the human brain are what Christians would call the soul. They are almost entirely atheist. They see the, these systems as being the creation of godlike artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence. In fact, Mo Gaudat himself uh, describes it explicitly in these terms. He believes that the programmers at Google are creating a God that never existed in his mind. They are playing yeah. with fire. Yeah, it's, it's big time. Yeah, trying to play God. So what do we do about it? 
Um, you know, at this point, uh, given that we're talking about the wealthiest man on earth, uh, the most powerful corporations on earth, the most powerful military on earth, and all of their competitors in China, India, and Israel, and Europe, uh, I think probably this is not the most optimistic. Um, the brace yourself. Not much we can do. I mean, uh, I, I think on an individual level, there's plenty. And on a communal level, there's plenty. But I think there's going to be a lot of sacrifices for anybody who doesn't want to play along with this whole thing. Okay, the book is Dark Aeon, Transhumanism and the War Against Humanity. Joe Allen, thanks for providing us with your insights. We appreciate it. Uh, very glad to. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.